Hey fellas, welcome back to another episode here at the Mancor channel. Uh, today's topic, we are going to be covering some details around the importance of father and son. So uh, we're going to kind of get into some, some statistics I found and uh, just some general thoughts about you know, the importance and the role in which uh, father and son play and, and really the role of the, of the father in the household. So I'm not a father, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. But, um, you know, these are all things that, you know, I'm, I'm certainly interested in because I do certainly want to have kids someday. And, you know, the more that I can prepare myself and the better man that I can become uh, in preparation for bringing kids into this world, the, uh, the better this world's going to be. So I will have done my part if uh, if I uh, if I get that stuff prepared now and if I you know work on my shit now. So and that's what we're going to cover off on today, and um, you know it's it's just something that you know I've I've seen I guess in the last you know probably year really really come to really come full circle. So I had a realization the other day that. There's a couple of people that I really look up to and they're they're more notable like, you know, actors or or musicians and, or athletes. And specifically, they are they are people who have had some pretty traumatic uh, father son relationships or they they grew up without fathers or uh, were abandoned by their fathers. So um, I noticed that there was a theme in the people that I've always really looked up to and so it was, uh, it was something that I thought was really cool and it, you know, sort of took me down this path of finding out the, the importance or the role that uh, fathers play in, in the household. So, you know, what's crazy is that, you know, right now there's just under about 20 million, 20 million adolescent kids that are fatherless. So that's like one in four households. And if you think about what kind of effect that can have on on an adolescent and how that stays with them through adulthood, uh, it, it's pretty striking. So I, I looked up some facts and and you know I kind of delved into this a little bit, and you know I noticed that there was kind of some general themes and they all make sense. Uh, they're you know they they affect both the adolescent girls and and boys so and even the mother too i mean this is this is not something that is just uh select to the you know to the to the kids of the household it affects it affects the mom too so um a couple of things that um that i found out so you know we know that you know the role of of the man in the house or you know we should understand that the man the role the the role of the man in the house is to lead and to discipline and to protect and provide. And, you know, without, I think, leadership and discipline are the things that really stand out to me as being the two primary key components of where things can get off the rails for people or for, for kids or everybody else in the household. So, you know, without that leadership or without that discipline, without that guidance, kids don't know where they don't, you know, they don't know who to have allegiance to or they don't really have much direction. So, you know, they turn um, to other areas of their life. They, you know, they take a wrong turn somewhere or they, you know, turn to a substance or um, an addiction of some kind and or violence and, you know, to try and heal those, um, heal the pain or to, to kind of deal with their own demons. And, you know, I think, because they're trying to fill a void or they're trying to get over the fact that they themselves were abandoned or they themselves um, were were second chosen to maybe a disease or, or I mean, alcoholism or, you know, a drug or some other addiction or another family, for God's sakes. So I think when when kids grow up and they don't have that leadership or that discipline and they also understand when they get older that, uh they're trying to fill a void or there's a void inside that they're trying to fill. I think that that can be really traumatic. Um, but a couple of things here. So they're more, they're more susceptible, they're four times more susceptible to, to poverty. And I think that that goes back to, you know, just leadership and, you know, the, the father's role in being able to, you know, encourage 
the sun to sort of explore uh, and to, to go out and find the things that, you know, he's curious about and take risks and be bold. And, you know, I, I think without that, that, uh, that driving force or that leading force in a father of the household, I think people just kind of settle and they don't really go and stretch and reach for what they want. And, uh, they don't, uh, you know, have any interest in achieving their, their, uh, their own potential. So it makes sense why they would settle or why they would uh, be impoverished conditions. Of course, why not? Right. Um, more likely to have behavioral problems. So I think that's an obvious one. Um, you know, the behavior problems I think are rooted in the fact that, you know, they, they, they come to understand that the, the father left because they were not as important as whatever, you know, the father left for, or, um, you know, that he chose alcohol or, or an addiction or whatever the case may be. I think it's it's natural to to understand that behavioral problems are a reaction to, you know, being deserted and feeling like you didn't have somebody there that cared enough about you to stick around or or to want to be with you or that, you know, only spent a limited amount of time with or you didn't really get to know. Um, it, it, it totally makes sense. You know, if there's an anarchist sense about people who lose their fathers, who don't get to know their fathers, who, who, you know, had to get over the fact that that dad left, of course. Yeah. You're going to be pissed at the world. I don't, I, you know, it, it makes total sense. Um, they're more likely to go to prison. So I think there's a correlation there too. So, you know, the incarceration rates are directly connected to, um, households or, or kids that grew up without dads. And here again, we're back, we're back to some leadership, but uh, more discipline. I think, you know, kids need to know where the line is, where the boundary is. And, and dad is the one that sets that, you know, it, it, it's the way that I kind of perceive it. And it's not, you know, to uh, placate on, um, on gender roles, but there, there really is an element of, and the, the necessity really for the discipline the disciplinarian of a father to say, you know, this is what's acceptable. This is what's not. Um, there are consequences for your actions. Uh, this is what we uh, expect of you. And this is what you are to uphold as a man. You know, these are all things that I think when, when, when boys have, or when, when daughters have, uh, you know, they have a much better understanding of really who they are and where they fit into the household, where they fit into the world. And, you know, without, without having that kind of discipline, they're kind of careless. They, you know, are aimless in their direction. They don't really know what they can and can't get away with. So, um, you know, if they have bad behavioral problems, it, it's, it's conceivable that they would end up in prison. Um, more likely to commit a crime. I think you could, you know, obviously why, why go to prison just because you're upset? I think it's because you have committed a crime. Um, whether that be through violence or um, assault or, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. I just think that you have a lot of like undealt with and unresolved anger and also a void that you th that, that, that they tend to feel. Uh, and, you know, committing a crime makes them feel like they're significant, makes them feel like they're in control, makes them feel like they're exercising or that they're dealing with their demons, even if it's because they don't have any impulse control. They're just, you know, they got to get it out. They got to deal with it. So um, they don't really have much control over themselves, uh, particularly because, you know, the environment they grew up in didn't have much control. So they're used to that sort of chaos, um, directionless, uh, lack of discipline area where, uh, well, if I, commit a crime, you know, I can get away with it because, you know, mom used to let me get away with it. You know, enough years of that, enough conditioning of that. That's why, you know, they think they can kind of get away with it. They don't really know where the line is. They don't know how to toe the line. They don't really know the boundaries. They don't know where they fit into the world, what they can and can't get away from. Next one, uh, they're seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. And to me, it seems like that's twofold. One, it's, uh, it's the carelessness of, you know, I don't know my boundaries. I don't know what I can, can't get away from. I don't know, 
um, you know, what I should and shouldn't be doing. Uh, I could be partying, you know, at a young age because, again, I don't have anybody telling me not to. But I also think it's it comes from, uh, you know, a a like a boy or a daughter or like a son or a daughter that that has this kind of uh, idea that they're going to do it better than than what was done to them. So in a boy's example, it's like, well, my dad deserted me or my dad left for another family or he was a raging alcoholic. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to provide. And they tend to really get that way without really understanding who they are first and really dealing with themselves first. So uh, when they kind of start to hit maturity and obviously they're getting their sexual urges, you know, I think if they're not acting it out, I think that they're trying to prove a point. And um, so teen pregnancy skyrockets uh, in both um, uh, men and women. So they are, uh, they're more likely to face abuse and neglect. So, you know, I think that just becomes their normal. Not only, again, have they experienced it, but when they become, uh, you know, parents of their own, if that's their normal, if that's what they that's their barometer for, for a normal household. Um, they don't see it as, as being wrong to pass that on. So, you know, that's how they saw that it was dealt. That's what they know. And to handle the problems in their own houses, to handle the problems with their own kids, you know, that's exactly what they do. That's how they discipline. That's how they lead. That's how they conduct their own uh, father and daughter, uh, father, son and, and father, daughter relationships or, uh, uh, you know, husband and wife relationships. So it's what they see. So it's what they know. They don't know any different. That's, that's what their normal is. They're more likely to abuse, uh, drugs and alcohol. And to me, it seems like, you know, it's because of that void that they're trying to fill. They haven't dealt with the stuff. They feel like they're not enough. They don't feel like, you know, people prioritized them or cared about them. So I'm going to go to the one place or the few places that I'm significant and, you know, I have control and what numbs my pain ultimately. So, you know, for them to become more addicted to drugs and alcohol certainly makes sense. Um, there's no discipline. There's no, Hey, this is probably bad for you. Uh, it's just, they just, they, they just experience pain and they don't know why. And the only thing to numb that pain is, is legal substance and addiction. So uh, they're two times more likely to suffer from obesity. And I equate that to being disciplined. You know, um, I think mothers are, are, they tend to be more, you know, they're the caregivers. They don't want to, they don't want to see anybody's feelings get hurt. You know, they're just, they're more tender where the father is, you know, he needs to step into that disciplinarian role. Hey, you know, don't watch TV all day. Get off the video games. Go outside. Go hang out with your friends. Um, you know that that encouragement to to go out and explore uh, rather than just to be sedentary. Um, typically, you know, boys that come from single mother uh, households or where the father chose, you know, uh, food or or addiction or booze himself. Uh, you know, they turn to food as, as a way to kind of cope with their, uh, their lack of self-worth or their, uh, that void that I talked about earlier. And, uh, the last one is they're two times more likely to drop out of high school. So, you know, at that point, if they're not, uh, parents by then, uh, or they haven't become incarcerated or because of bad behavior, um, because they're doing drugs and alcohol and committing crimes, you know, there's, there's nobody there that says, Oh, I shouldn't do this. I know mom doesn't want me to, but she'll still let me crash on the couch. Uh, that's typically what the ambivalent, uh, teens would do. So, you know, dropping out of high school, like if, if there was no direction, if there was no aim, if there was no discipline at home, well, dropping out of high school seems like kind of a, you know, just the way to go. Like, I don't want to deal with this. It's too hard. You know, nobody ever pushed me. So, you know, this seems like the easy way out. I'll figure it out later. Um, or if this is what dad did, you know, it's it, the the likelihood that they would drop out of high school, not even finish high school or go to college uh, it, it is two times as much. I mean, that's crazy for those 19 million or the, just under 20 million. I mean, just run the numbers on all the things that I just went through there. 
across one in four households, across under you know 20 million adolescents. It's it's striking. So you know, it's um, our role as men in in the household is so important, and you know, it's it scares me at times because I feel like now because of technology and other things. And, you know, a lot of the desertion that kids experience from, from their fathers, you know, this is in 10 years, I, I feel like this is going to really be a problem, uh, a really blow up on our face. And I, I worry that there's not enough leadership and not enough and a lack of discipline in today's kids where we got to have it now. Uh, we need it now because of technology, but also dad was never around. Um, you know, he never told me that I couldn't, he never, you know, taught me to toe the line or discipline or, you know, push me to explore and get out there. I, I have concerns about where this takes our youth. And my goal with this channel was to really, you know, help men become better and to uh, be better leaders, to, um, understand their role in the household as being the one that their kids look to and will emulate and pass on in future generations. Whether you want to believe it or not, the model of the world that is going on in your household is the model of the world that the kids that you bring take in, uh, take with them, even after you're gone. So it, if you want to create better, a better future, it starts with us. You know, it starts with getting it starts with getting us right. It starts with becoming better with our emotions. It starts with becoming a better man, a, a stronger, a more congruent, a more uh, polished, a more disciplined, respected, loyal, and resilient man. And it's so important that we understand how, what, what that does to, to, the, to the kids that we bring into this world and how they become parents and how they teach their kids how to be parents. So got passionate about that this week and I wanted to share that with you, but uh, I know that everybody watching this is doing everything they can to uh, be a better man. And, and for that, I'm grateful. So um, thank you very much for watching. Please like and share the video. Uh, if you have friends and family members who you think would also be good community members and would gain value from the show, I would appreciate it if you would, uh, if you would, if you would share the channel with them. Uh, publish this out to your friends and family. Again, we're building a community for men here, fellas. So uh, I appreciate your help. If you have a uh, a challenge or a problem that you'd like some advice on, uh, or if you have uh, some feedback or comments to share about an upcoming video, a topic you want to see here on the channel, please send me an email at themancoreproject at gmail.com. All right, fellas, the weekend is almost over and I got to head out. But uh, thank you so much. Have a great week. I will see you on the next episode of The Man Corps. Thank you.